Hi everyone and welcome back on my channel. How's everyone doing? Let me just fix my face a little bit. How's everyone doing today? Is the day well I announced my giveaway winner, so I will be inserting that in this video, so stay tuned for that. How is everyone doing? It's fine. Beautiful, cold where I am. It snowed. I had to shovel. Winter day in February. And happy February, everyone. It's been a year already, hasn't it? For Canada, I know it's been a year. We um, have a freedom rally going across Canada because you now have to be vaccinated to drive a truck or you have to isolate for 14 days. And apparently that's a no-go. That's a no-go for everyone. Um, so now we're having protests about this shit. And I'm sick and tired of COVID. Can you guys tell me if you're sick and tired of COVID? Like, if masks go away, I will probably still wear them because I hate people. I don't like talking to people. I don't like being around people. And I really enjoy going out shopping, getting what I need and getting out. I don't want to sit and talk to you. I don't want to do that. If I wanted to talk to you, I would have probably... You know maybe called you up or something like that so let me know down below how you guys feel about covid and everything like that because i'm out i'm done i'm done talking about it. i'm done doing all that stuff and how is everyone else doing um some cool things in my life not really cool things I'm, i got another tattoo it's on my ribs here i'm covered now i don't know if you guys can see it it says with you wherever you go it's for my um i had a grade six teacher who was super super close with me we would go for coffee um all the time after i graduated and every time i came back home from college and stuff i'd always go see her and uh she passed away i think three weeks before my wedding um she was a big part of my life and i really really valued her and unfortunately she she passed away so i got that tattoo for her and then next week i'm going to the city again to get another tattoo with my best friend so I'm super excited. I just love tattoos. I love all that fun stuff. So let me know what you guys are excited for. If there's anything coming up, what are you guys doing for Valentine's Day? What is going on in the world of you guys? Let me know. Is there anything cool happening there? Is anywhere else in Canada having freedom rallies? I know we have them all the time and I'm just like, I'm bored. I'm over it. We get it. You don't want to be vaccinated and uh, that's okay. I don't really care anymore. So today we have a video and I'm going to be, uh, doing a nice natural look today something i feel like my last couple looks i've been trying to do have just bombed hard so i'm just gonna do something casual i have to take my dog to the dog park after this all that fun stuff so i'm just gonna go super light super chill you know fresh and fun stuff like that and the story i have today is i don't want to say it's close to my heart but when this story happened i was uh in the same same city which is it like oh wow it was a big city where it happened but still I, like i remember my mom calling me and was like did you hear because i went to a party that night too in the same city for year end and she's like did you know any of them do you because you know small it's small little towns so we're going to talk to you about the story i'm going to talk to you about is about an individual who went to a year end party um to his friend's house where he had a mental break and killed five of his close friends. So if you want to see me go from this to this, then stay tuned and I'll talk to you about the story about Matt who went to a house party and killed five of his friends. So again, I'm going to try to show you guys kind of what I'm using. So this will be my foundation today. It is the True Skin hydrating foundation with hyaluronic acid it's pretty good i like it hack for you guys what i do is i get this from shoppers i give my mom a list of makeup i need from shoppers drug mart and on thursdays she goes and buys it for me because she's old and she gets the senior discount and then i just e-transfer her the money so that's a little hack for you guys out there Okay, so let's start with the story. On April 15, 2014, it started like a normal day. So this story, as I explained, sorry, that's my dog. I'm going to be doing it in a couple different um, viewpoints. So the viewpoint of the girl who hosted the party um, and kind of about the individual himself who actually committed the crime. I look great. <laughs> so on April 15, 2014, it started like any other end of the semester day. Um... Shorts is her last name. I'll be calling her that. 
short stay at the University of Calgary meant that the campus was filled with underdressed students skipping the final classes to start drinking early. And let me tell you, that is the vibe. Around this time, I was at Mount Royal University when this happened, so they called it the Battle of the Glenmore because um, Cal University of Calgary was here and like there's a road, the main road Glenmore, and then Mount Royal was here and we used to always battle each other when it came to sports and stuff just to see who was the best. It was always UFC because we were just a small university, but yeah, so same i was there around the exact same time you know campus is closing so she said she never really been um one for big crowds the idea of being surrounded by brilliant neo-clad peers soaked in mimosas um wasn't really something that she really liked to she knew that everyone was ready to party everyone was gonna have a good time and she again just was like you know what i really just want to hand in my final paper and kind of you know get on so she decided that she was going to have a party at her house this year something different so shorts um handed in her final paper and was like i'm gonna go home now you know start getting ready for the party the vibe kind of thing so shorts lived near the university in an older split level house with four friends um so preparations began pretty early for the party as one would say you know how it is like when I throw parties back in the day when you were allowed to throw parties I used to go all out decorations all kinds of stuff food all that fun stuff I used to love I love hosting not anymore as I just said earlier how much I hate people but I used to love hosting so her preparations began early and with the arrival of a few eagle friends who really wanted to get it started and wanted to help um she decided that you know they wanted to have the best experience and they started decorating so for when the guests decide to come shorts hustled home um and was like her phone was buzzing i guess at this point because people wanted to know hey is the party still going on is it is it okay if i still come you know friends looking to conform the party details and all that by early evening people filled her modest house and had spilled out into the garage in the yard it was exactly what everyone had needed, um, collectively welcoming um, some were coming. They were all like, hey, you know, it is like you bust your butt all year in school to get good grades, to get your papers done, to do the best you can. At the end of the year, you hand in your paper, you don't care, you finish exams, all that stuff. You're like, I want to go home. I want to just, you know, get a summer job and just just chill. That's the vibe. So. A year in party is always where it at is where it's at sorry so she had no idea that in a few hours it would, she would be sitting in a cold interrogation room her hands and clothes caked in blood and detailing this happy moment to the cops while her and what happened to a pot she tried to understand how five of her friends had been stabbed to death at a party the person who killed these friends at in her home her roommates, her high school crush, um, her mentor, her confidant was also someone who she considered a friend. She invited Matthew de Grude to a house. So Matthew arrived late to the party that night um, and his conversation seemed ominous. People were kind of like, mm, this guy's a little weird. He went out he went on and on about conspiracy theories most of the party goers didn't think much of it they're like oh this guy's just been drinking you know when people start drinking they start talking about random random stuff so they're like okay well whatever good for you yeah conspiracy theories are cool which i think in 2014 not a lot of people did talk about conspiracy theories so open if somebody just started talking about conspiracy theories now i'd be like okay yeah i get you you're not vax that would be instantly what I think. So people didn't really think much of his um, weird behaviors and his and his talk. They were just like, oh, drunk. But his pe his behavior got pro progressively, I can't speak to it, progressively worse. People were like, this guy's getting weird and strange. At one point, he had put on blue surgical gloves and then washed his hands with them on. So he just slipped them on, went to go wash his hands like he was on like a Grey's, Grey's Anatomy or something like that. He's like... Let's get crazy. Let's just people like that's a little strange. But again, you know, 
everyone's partying, everyone's drunk, like, haha, this guy must be high on mushrooms or some shit. Let's just keep on going. Um, he also carried garlic in his pocket and he started talking about the blood moon and the apocalypse and the vampire. So now people are like, this guy, whatever, you know. To me, if that was me, I would just try to avoid him. I'd be like, mm, I don't really want to talk to him. I don't know where he came from, what he did, but I'm just going to avoid him like the plague and just go on with my day and my party. So around 1 a.m. on April 15th, Schutz and uh, her friends went out to a nearby McDonald's to pick up some food, which drunk people do. We've all done that. We've all been there. Uh, Lawrence was sleeping on the love seat in the living room. Josh, um, Katie... Katie, I think is how you pronounce it. I could be wrong. And Jordan was still sitting on the couch across from the room. Zach was in the kitchen. What happened next quickly and un was quickly and unexpected. No one saw it coming. Coming. I will learn to speak one day, guys. I promise. So Matthew suddenly took a large chef knife from a block in the kitchen. He stabbed Zach seven times. Then went into the living room. There was no warning, no fight, no altercation at all. He just walked in with a chef's knife. Josh was stabbed six times. Matthew was and was stabbed Jordan once. And Katie tried to escape and he chased her down. So Katie tried to escape the, the room and was like, I'm getting out of here. Like, this guy's gone nuts. But, like, quickly with no... He caught up to her. He just chased her down. He caught up to her in the dining room and stabbed her four times. Like... I don't know about you guys, but I always think, I don't know why I always think about this, but I always think about this. Would you rather be stabbed or shot? I think being stabbed is very personal. And I think being shot is, I would rather not have somebody at the other end holding something in me. That's just my thoughts on that. Let me know. Let's do a poll. Stabbed or shot? What would you prefer? Let me know if you guys ever think of that too. I know I'm a little different, but whatever. So Lawrence was still sleeping um, when this was going on, but then, uh, you know, Matthew came in and started stabbing him too. So he didn't even stand a chance. Despite life suffering injuries, Josh got up and ran out of the front door to the house. Matthew followed him. The group who had gone to pick up fast food returned at this point, uh, heard Katie screaming from inside the house and witnesses witnessed Matthew chase down Josh in the streets with the knife in his hand. Um, Shorts ran after him. Josh was still in a fight for his life and ran back towards the house where he collapsed on the front lawn. Shorts caught up to Matthew down the street. Matt handed um, over the bloody knife and told Shorts it was the night of the long knives and then took off. I wouldn't chase that guy. I wouldn't like it. Could you imagine if I rolled up? I know it's my house, but if I rolled up to my house, and this dude was standing over top of someone with a knife and was going and the guy was covered in blood. I ain't wrestling him to the ground. Sorry, I'm calling the cops. Somebody else can do that. I don't got time to get involved. Well, like I say that now. I sound like a shitty person for this, but do you want to put like you can now call the cops and maybe have this guy life threatening, like maybe save this guy's life or you can get involved too and die. So now I'm going to go in. Oh, I didn't show you. I use this as my concealer. Use this as my bronzer. And this is my blush. And now I'm going in with this um, eyeshadow palette. I really do enjoy it. It's got a lot of nice neutrals in it. Um, I might also use my Morphe. Who knows? You know, dabble. Mix it up a little bit. So... Shorts chased after him again once like he's like here's the knife peace out bitch I'm out once uh he caught once she caught up with him um uh, Matt wiped his bloody hands on her hands and was like here's a present and told her they were blood brothers so at this point I don't need to be chasing after this dude who's like going crazy right yes I grew up with him yes I know him very well but I ain't his blood brother he warned his friend not to get in his way or he would be or she would be next and was like, dude, you can leave. Um, so then, sorry, it wasn't Brenda. It was Brendan at this time. He let Matthew go. While back at the house, one of the other roommates called 911. Police arrived on the scene with five, in less than five minutes. They're like, we need to get there. Like there was a couple stabbings. 
Zach, Jordan, and Lawrence were already dead. Josh and Katie were rushed to the hospital but later died from their injuries. Almost immediately after calling 911, um, Matthew was spotted by police running frantically away from the crime scene. Officers deployed the canine unit and said he appeared to have no fear of the police service dogs. He showed no signs of pain and continued to fight back as they put him under arrest. So like they let the dogs go on him and he did not care. He's like, well, I'm going to beat the shit out of these dogs. Like that's how you know somebody's like either super high on drugs or just mentally not okay. Because, you know, even like a sane person who kills people, I don't think there's really anyone like that, but they you know, we'll probably feel that shit if a dog's biting them and will fall down. It's like people who are like running from the cops when they do like, um, they steal something or they steal a vehicle and it's like a high speed chase. They will feel that. This guy didn't. He was just like, yeah, I'm going to beat the dogs up because that's who I am. So, you know, once they had him in cuffs and handcuffs and stuff like that, they, uh, was searching him and they found latex gloves and a clove of garlic in in his sock. He told police it was to keep the vampires away and said he wanted to speak to his lawyer. So instantly dude knew he's like, I was caught, right? Like I'm going, going to jail. He was put in an ambulance and told uh, paramedics that I, I was just trying to kill them before they killed me. So like the dude thought, a hundred percent that these guys the sleeping guy on the couch was coming for him he had like that's what was in his head he didn't think about anything else he just thought oh i put too much there he just instantly thought these guys are out to get me and i need to get them before um they get me and i find people with schizophrenia this is a huge thing like uh, i'm gonna reference vincent lee here and that was one of his things too that he said that oh that guy's gonna kill you i have to kill him so they picked up matt they're bringing him by ambulance to the detachment and just then and there they realized something shocking they said you know what this is a crazy this is like the worst stabbing that calgary has had and then just to add to the fun fact of everything, they realized the investigations quickly learned the suspect was the son of their own. So he was, his dad was like a lead um, cop with the, oh, just boppies, with the um, Calgary police. So they're like, oh, like who is going, like, could you imagine, like, you just like, arrested your boss's son for murdering a bunch of kids like i i'm not telling him i'm not telling him so matthew was 22 year old son of veteran high-ranked officer with the calgary police service and would soon be charged with five counts of first degree murder matt stated state of mind at the time of the stabbing would become the focal point of this case so during this trial, they did kind of interview a few um, cops, not cops, a few like schizophrenic, whatever they're called, doctors. So Alberto Choi, director of forensic psychiatry at Alberta Hospital of Edmonton, interviewed Matt after killing. Matt 24 told Choi that a couple weeks before this took place, he started to believe that he was the sun god and that war between the Illuminati, werewolves, and vampires was about to happen and was going to take place. In part, he said he was inspired by Twilight. And who is inspired by Twilight? I would like to find somebody who's not. Was inspired by Twilight and the movie Quick De Freak. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that. It's an anime um, and the manga series of it about a kid who turned into a half vampire. He heard a male voice who he thought was the devil telling him to kill them before they get you. He could not converse with the voice, but it was directing like directing at him saying, you need to kill these fucking people or you're gonna die. So he couldn't talk to him. He was like, mm, you know, 
and the guy was just the voice was just giving him warning signs after warning signs like you need to do something or you're gonna die um coy testified while matt has admitted to killing the five victims lawrence hong 27 joshua hunter 23 jordan sikwa sikwa 22 and cat caitlin pierce 23 and zachary Zachariah Rathwell, 21, in April of 2020, 2014, he pleaded not guilty. His legal team um, argued he is not criminally responsible for the crimes. In court, two physicians took hit, who took witness stand seemed um, to use the bolster uh, theory. So they wanted, they decided that they were going to use the theory that this guy is not criminally responsible due to the fact that he was undiagnosed schizophrenic and the reason why he did these things is because of the voices and um, because of his mental state which is like is valid like I understand where people come from with that but once I tell you the rest of this story and how how many years ago it was and where he is now. I want you guys to really, I want to know what you guys feel. So Coy said that he did not make a specific diagnosis on Matt. He was suffering from a mental disorder and formed um, the perspective he was clearly psychotic. Doctor who assessed him said that he was clearly experienced a psychotic episode at the time evidence showed that he believed that he was the son of god like i said and hitler reincarnated which that one's scary that would be scary for me like hitler reincarnated like dude you didn't even ask these guys like you just killed random people like you're not hitler well i guess hitler did the same thing he just you know randomly killed people but you know what i mean like that's that's somebody you don't want to be as Hitler reincarnated. I can tell you that. I can think of anyone else. There's this TikTok thing where it's like, who was I in a past life? And a lot of people are getting Christ Christopher Columbus and like losing their mind. And I think it's really funny. So I just thought I'd put that in there. So yeah, he said he was Hitler reincarnated and that the victims were Illuminati, uh, werewolves and Medusa. He was eventually diagnosed with schizophrenia. Uh, the not criminally responsible defense previously known as the insanity defense has been used in some of the most notorious cases in Canada history. It was used with Vincent Lee. I do have a video of Vincent Lee. Um, I'll link it down below so you guys can click it if you're interested. The man who beheaded Tim McLean on the bus in 2009. Um, he was successfully, he, successfully, he was convicted criminally not responsible for his actions due to the fact that again, he was the same, not criminally responsible, hearing voices and said it was um, the devil telling him that he needed to kill Kim be, uh, Tim before Tim killed him. Um, so this is the exact same thing, which is sad because I know like when it comes to schizophrenia and stuff like that, it can happen just in an instant. Like you do not know like, you, and it's usually typically in young men in the late 20s is when I find a lot of them do get the first cases of schizophrenia. Sometimes they don't have to kill people. I will, if I remember in the next couple videos, there's this uh, Amazon Prime video about um, institutions that focus on people who are not criminally responsible and they go there. I just don't know why I can't think of the word right now. And it interviews the people who are in these um, institutions and what they did. And it's very interesting. I really, really enjoyed it. So if I remember the name, I will link it down below or post it on my Instagram. Whatever. So back to Tim McLean. So that it was successful with his uh, murderer. While Luca Magnata's legal team was unable to convince a jury that he too was mentally ill. Um, to know what he was doing when he dismembered uh, Concordia. I don't know why I'm so poppy today. Concordia University student, Jun Lin, in 2012. If you want to know more about that story, I never did anything on that one. But you have to go watch, um, was it Fuck Cats or something like that. And that is the story of um, Luca Magnata, who's like notorious in 
one of the craziest guys in Canadian history for killing people. Very interesting too, so go check that one out. But he didn't get the not criminally responsible because he knew what he was doing. That dude was just an egotistical asshole who just, you know, wanted all the spotlight on him. That's what happened then. Just so you guys know. So the defense must either show that the mentally ill made them incapable of understanding what they were doing. You think you're peeling an orange, but in reality you're stabbing somebody. Or because of the mental disorder, you did not know that you were doing wrong. So, which I don't really know how that worked for this guy because he did admit that he did kill people. Right? He did say like, oh yeah, I, I killed them and didn't, so I don't know, whatever. Um, that's just my thought. He knew what he was doing. He admitted to it. So Matthew falls into the later category. So the second one, according to the testimony, after hours of investigations and physical test testing, experts supported the finding of not criminal responsible. So NCL, you might see on May 25th, 2016, the judge um, presiding over the case agreed those exports with those exports and found that Matt was not criminally responsible for his actions, which if I am a parent, I would be choked. Would you? So Matt is deemed un, he is no longer criminally responsible for his actions. The court ruling, I mean, the court of Queens bench justice emphasized law around it. NCR ruling, which ensures people who have mental disorders are treated, not punished, which yes, I agree with that. We need to treat these people, but you know, they still did what they did. They still killed people. Now there's five families who are never going to be able to see their kids do what kids are supposed to do, graduate from college, do whatever, because this guy had a mental lapse and murdered them. So they're not gonna get punished. The court rulings officially ended um, Matt dealing with the Canadian criminal code, criminal justice system, and his case was moved into the healthcare system. He was sent to a secure psychiatric facility. The Aborda um, Review Board, the ARB, looks at Matt's case annually and decides if there's any significant treatment, uh, threat, sorry, to the public health and safety so that's how it's kind of like parole right when you're like how did you feel about what you did do you still think do you have any remorse would you do it again if you let you out if you do let you out what are you gonna do with um are you gonna get a job who are you gonna stay with that's just kind of how it works when it comes to parole so these guys do the same thing there's a little bit of a board they all sit and they all look at him and say, has he been successful in um, taking his treatment? Has he had a lapse? Is he not taking his medication? Is it a struggle for him to take his medication? Is he taking his medication independently or does it need to be administrated by staff? Um, just stuff like that. That's kind of how they have to look at it. Like, has he had any suicidal ideations? Is it, you know, has he attacked staff? Is he like threatening to hurt himself or others what else can we do to make this guy able to you know be rehabilitated and come back into society so but you know what I, i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you this after i'm gonna tell you this after i'm not gonna i'm not gonna tell you my thought right now so you know he was but the review board looks at Matt and his cases annually and is a uh, significant threat to the public. It's not up to Matt to prove that he isn't a risk. It is up to the board to find evidence that he, if he is or is not. Each year, the board has a three options. Continue his treatment in a secure facility, grant him conditional discharge, or grant uh, him an absolute discharge. The law states that the board has to impose the least um restrictions while protecting the public just 10 ma months after he was declared not criminally responsible for killing those people he um my eyes are going he was matt was asked for increased freedom 
So he thought to himself that, hey, I know I'm not criminally responsible. Let this guy out a little bit more, right? So 10 months. So let's think of some other cases right now, okay? We're just going to think of some other cases really quick. Top of our heads. Um, you murder five people in Canada and you're not criminally responsibly. It's life in jail if it's forced to be, right? So this guy did that five times. After 10 months, he said, I would like some more freedom. And they're like, okay. So he was given, he was asked for more freedom. The following year in 2018, two years after being declared criminally not responsible, Matt was moved to a secure facility in Edmonton. Doctors described Matt as a model patient. They always do. Give me a second. I'm trying to outline my lips and it's it's hard to do and talk. So they're like, he's a model patient. He was granted unsupervised ground privileges as well as a pass into the city as long as he was supervised by a reasonable adult. Both of his parents have been that status. Which, you know, the parents, you know, he had a schizophrenic break. That's what happened. He's not that. It's still his kid. So he was also allowed to leave for 24 hours at a time to stay with his family. And by 2019, the freedoms were again increased that same year. They all be noted that Matt was experienced insomnia and increased activity, which they said showed evidence of mental deterioration when a change was made to Matt's medication. Doctors said that he was under, um, he was under reporting and by Matt of his development symptoms. So he wasn't saying anything to anyone. So when people were asking when he got new medication, how he was feeling, he was like fine, but he was sleeping more and he wasn't having as much like brain activity and not enough stimulation. So people were like, oh, I didn't know that. Um, so he's getting more and more freedom. His medication is working. He has a good understanding of his mental health and the need of treatment. But when his medication is not working, um, he has deterioration along with his condition. They say the doctors note that while schizophrenia cannot be cured, it can be managed, which is true. And now my favorite part, a little bit of highlight. So they said like, we can manage his schizophrenia. It's not gonna go away, but we'll, you know, we're gonna manage it, which is a valid thing. According to the ARB written, um, Matt stopped taking his medication. He is likely to relapse within a few weeks or months and the relapse is likely to become full blown. The violence could come once again, catastrophic. If he doesn't re-enter a psychotic state, according to documents, Matt defense lawyer Allen's, Allen points out that Matt has already been medicated. His medication is completed. Um, he maintains he will always be. He wants to take his medication. He knows, he understands what will happen if he doesn't take the medication and he knows the complica com complications and what potentially could that mean for him in the long run. So he, he wants to remain well. He does not want to ever go back to where he was. I think the problem here is some people seem to think that deep down he is just a psychotic killer and he's welcoming the opportunity to um, redo his status. And that's just ridiculous. By law, he's entitled to absolute discharge face said all he wants all i want for him are that he legally entitled to the same way as the families of the victims and that they are legally entitled so as of june 2020 matt still lives in a secure facility in edmonton he's allowed unsupervised visits into the city and overnight passes that extended two weeks uh the week and can be traveled anywhere in the province for up to a week with a responsible adult. So that is where Matt is now. And this is my final look. I didn't put any heavy lashes on. I didn't put anything. I am going to the dog park, nothing super cool. And it snowed like crazy here. So this is my final look. So I wanna know what your guys' final thoughts is here. So he killed five people. He killed five people. He might not be criminally responsible. He didn't know he did, but he killed five people. I know 
that Tim McLean's family did meet with the family and the victims of these individuals who passed and they said that they don't believe that he should be out. So Vincent Lee is also out. It was the exact same thing. Well, you know, he started taking his medication. He's not schizophrenic. Um, and he did need help. Yes, unfortunately, he did kill someone. I don't know if I 100% agree with the idea that you can murder someone, become criminally not responsible. And I get it. He was 100% criminally not responsible and get out in less than four years. You you can be drunk, hit someone, not and not know like you didn't mean to and kill them and get more time. You can throw a water bottle at someone and they could fall in the street and get hit by a car and you can get more time for that than killing five people. And I get it. Yes, he was not criminally responsible. Yes, he went and he's going to take his medication. He's with a reasonable adult. He still technically is at home. I mean, in an institution and still getting help. I get all that. Don't come for me about that. I don't think, for me, if my sister was murdered at a party and the person was found criminally not responsible and three years later he was allowed to have a pass to go into town and hang out with everyone while I am no longer allowed to see my sister ever again because she was murdered, I do not think I'd be feeling pretty good about myself. I don't think I'd be feeling good about him. I get it. And then there's, there's the chance. So when he does finally get out, if he stops taking his medication, they're saying it could be catastro uh, catastrophic and he could lose it again and kill people or himself or hurt people around him, you know? Do we take that risk? Like, I get it. Yeah, I'm not trying to say we should institutionalize everyone who has a mental illness. I know you can take medication. I know you can get help. I get that. And having schizophrenia is not a joke. It is scary. It can, it's very scary for people. I, have, I know a couple families in town where I live who have individuals with schizophrenia. And my dad works closely with one of them and I get how scary it can be. But murdering five people, so families are not gonna be able to see their kids, not gonna be able to see their um, daughters, their sisters, their cousins, their best friends. They can't see them anymore, but you're allowed to be out because you took medication. He still should, this is what I was gonna say earlier, he still should get um, sentenced for what he did but then brought to an institution to get the proper treatment that he needs. He still did it, right? He still did it. He just, I get it. And I get it. He just didn't, you know, he didn't actually do it because it wasn't there, but he still should be sentenced. That's what I feel. And I don't want to see, hey, I'm sorry. This is just how I feel. If you don't feel that way and you want to change my mind, please let me know. I will greatly appreciate you. Just, I want to read it. I love reading your guys' comments. I've been getting some pretty cool comments and some crazy ones. Like, I just love it. So, thank you guys so much for this. And I will be back next Tuesday. And I'm going to tell you my dog came to visit again. Okay, lay down, buddy. Lay down. So, when... Sorry, I lost my train of thought because I'm not poppy. But I will see you guys next Tuesday. And thank you guys for coming and watching my channel. Again, my name is Joan McLean. And I'm here every Tuesdays for you to bring you true crimes. So I will see you guys again next Tuesday. Bye.